Hi everyone, I'm Shweta from Astronera and we are here to start something new today. And I have with me Kunal, who's a very dear friend of mine. So Kunal, will you introduce yourself to everyone? Uh, so guys, uh, I'm Kunal and uh, I love to write. So it all started when I was 16 and I was fascinated with world history and I always wanted to write the story of our world and you know uh, how it all began and where do we stand in the universe. So I decided to write uh, the entire history of the universe right from the Big Bang to the present day and uh, how it, a general overview of all those things. So that's how the idea evolved. I mean the title of the book is the story of everything. Right, so not a theory of everything no, but, but the story, story of, of everything. everything. Yeah. So we are going to do this as conversation um, and we are going to have various people come on board and talk about astronomy from their perspective. So I would like you to tell them how it began. So it all started with a video guys. In, in that Dr. Tyson says that he has a fascinatingly disturbing thought. And the thought is that uh, the closest, if you, if you look at history, uh, the closest relative to human beings uh, is the chimpanzee. Like we share around 98-99% of our DNA with the chimpanzee. Our intelligence comes from that 1% difference in the DNA. Like a chimp combining a few things to do a sign language and us building Hubble telescope and launching yeah. it into space. <laughs> Uh, comes all from that one percent difference. Mm -hmm. So, uh, doctor, what Doctor Tyson says is, what if we encounter a life form which is one percent different to us, the way we are one percent different uh, uh, with the, the chimps chimpanzee. to the chimpanzee? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What would that life form be like, and uh, what what would we right. uh, do if we encounter a life form like that? Right. So with that 1% difference, there's so much that humankind is doing right now, including getting ourselves in the trouble and uh, pollution and everything. Um, we thought how it would be if uh, there is something that is 1% better than humanity. That is going to be the main theme of this whole talk. So we are going to discuss that with uh, people from various backgrounds. And you know how I always say that you know astronomy is related to various different fields and uh, it's like my open challenge that give me any topic and I'll relate it to uh, astronomy yeah. some way or the other. Uh, so we have various friends uh, from various backgrounds like architecture or journalism or uh, you know even bureaucrats. So we thought it would be interesting to ask these people the same question and understand their point of views because it's going to be a lot different than person who already has a scientific background. Of course, it's going to be fun to actually be able to discuss this with Dr. Neil deGrasse Tyson himself yeah. uh, and also like uh, established scientists and astrophysicists like Dr. Jansen Aikar and uh, you know you guys can give us suggestions in the comment which with, with whom we can uh, talk about uh, this topic. But yeah, general idea was this, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So uh, it will be a fascinating journey, I think, and we have decided to call this as Nil Dot Talks because we, as Carl Sagan says, that we are just a speck of dust floating yeah. amongst a vast pale uh, blue dot in, yeah, this massive yeah, universe. in this massive universe. And you know, it also stemmed uh, from like different words. Like blue in Marathi also means uh, Nila. Yeah, yeah. So that's why also like this uh, little bit of word plays there. It's also yeah. inspired by Dr. Neil deGrasse Tyson. Tyson. So it's like yeah. dedicated sort of yeah. to him yeah. as well. And uh, also like another reason why we are doing this and we are going to get different people from different backgrounds is that um, I think astronomy is uh, included in, in, in very general day-to-day -day lives as well. And many people ask us when we do stargazing program is that why should we study astronomy? And mm. you know there's so many issues here on earth and yeah. uh, why are we looking up at the mm. stars? And I really feel that they don't understand how astronomy is involved in their day-to-day -day lives. Yeah. So with this, I think I want to portray this as well, that the people, the guests who are going to come on this talk will tell them how astronomy is somehow related to their fields as well, be it, uh, you know, bureaucrat or yeah. architect or yeah. whoever it is, you know. And uh, also, astronomy is for common people. 
uh, as I say that uh, you know um, in Indian Constitution it is written in the Article 51 AH that it is the duty of every Indian citizen to carry a scientific temper mm. and I believe that if you have this scientific temper you can lead your life in very better manner right mm -hmm. and people are generally like in their school days they are interested into astronomy but yeah. they get scared that you know there's a lot of maths and physics and they think they won't be able to understand that and so astronomy they don't choose and it you know sort of uh, they leave it behind so I hope that with this talk we will make people realize how astronomy is relatable for them as well and they don't really have to get into too much of technicalities and yeah. physics and mathematics yeah. to yeah. understand how it affects yeah. them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, absolutely I agree with her because astronomy is something which we share with the entire humankind. It is something that unites us and it not just unites uh, the people who are living here presently but it also uh, unites us with our ancestors because yeah. we have shared the same sky with with our ancestors, right. like the Stone Age man, uh, uh, you know, uh, Shivaji Maharaj or Albert Einstein yeah. saw the same sky that we yeah. have seen, somewhat the same sky that yeah. we see today. So it is something that unites all of us and, uh, you know, it. I think astronomy is a very good excuse to, uh, you know, unite people from different backgrounds and learn, learn from each other. How do you think uh, aliens would write a book? write a book first question is would an alien write a book <laughs> yeah uh, i mean how would they keep track or you know like we always imagine that they mm -hmm. would talk telepathically or yeah something like uh, that. i i really like uh, james cameron's avatar's version of aliens because uh, like an avatar has his ponytail and it has like those uh, um, yeah, that's a, those, somehow those, joins, yeah, that, like, that joins uh, together yeah, yeah. and uh, they connect with their ancestors. Not not just that, they can connect that thing with trees and uh, human, uh, other, other their fellow mates and like connect with them telepathically. Yeah, yeah. So maybe chances are that mm. you know they can communicate telepathically. So you think they would not write a book? <laughs> Maybe, I mean, there are insane number of possibilities yeah, because yeah. like as Carl Sagan says, we are just a pale blue dot and there are billions and trillions of galaxies out there. Yeah, yeah. And like maybe there are like so many planets mm -hmm. and what if a planet has life on it? Mm -hmm. We cannot imagine life on that right. planet because right. like what we think from a very earth uh, earth -bound earth -bound earth -bound perspective. Yeah. I mean earth is the only planet we know that yeah. has life yeah. so everything that we can yeah. try to study in the universe is yeah. going to revolve around, around that earth. you know yeah. like Goldilocks zone, water and uh, yeah. temperature yeah. and these are the parameters now that you know we hunt the exoplanets on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right so I think here the um, I mean the important question actually is not that if the life exists out there but if intelligent life exists out there yeah. the ones who yeah. might want to journal and write a yeah. document or yeah. a book or something because i mean look even in our solar system mm -hmm. uh, if we take mars for example mm -hmm. with the examples that i gave you earlier of how we find the exoplanets uh, ideal to sustain lives mm -hmm. there are these three main uh, mm -hmm. main things that we look at mm -hmm. one is the distance of that planet from the star mm -hmm. uh, because that is going to reflect on its temperature yeah. so the temperature should be not too cold to sustain life and not too hot as well for the life to stay on the surface and with this parameter we are also going to understand if uh, liquid water exists out there mm. so with these parameters even if we look at the mars which is very close to the earth so sort of like on the goldilocks yeah, zone yeah. it's a bit further away than this uh, from the sun yeah, than the earth yeah. right so it is a bit colder for life to sustain mm. on that but but uh, Shweta, sorry to cut you in, but uh, see the thing is, we ca we as I said that we think from a very earthbound perspective. Like we have found bacteria's like there is there is this bacteria called tardigrades. Yeah. And uh, tardigrades can survive extreme environments. Like they can survive uh, environments as uh, as as extreme as Venus. And uh, so what if there are life forms which mm -hmm. can survive? Uh, without water yeah. you know yeah. they can maybe they can they that's, may, that's what uh, yeah. that's what I was trying to explain like even on the earth like in the extreme conditions we have seen uh, some sort of life surviving you know we call them extremophiles yeah you know the ones who live on the poles of the earth or something like that 
Uh, we also know satellite of the Saturn, which has uh, terrains very uh, similar to that yeah. of the Earth, but has methane on it. Yeah, Jupiter's you know, so moons. Exactly. Also, again, as Neil deGrasse Tyson says, he wants to go ice fishing on yeah, Europa. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, even in our solar system, there's possibility of life to exist. And mm. as I was saying, the real question is, if the intelligent life exists out there, and if it is intelligent life, how it would be if it was 1% better than us? This, this yeah. really intrigues yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, there are two, both possibilities. Either uh, we can find life which is not as intelligent as us and we can come across life which can be more intelligent yeah. as the both possibilities exist yeah. out there Absolutely. so uh, i mean if there is a life which is one percent more intelligent than us then god help us because <laughs> like in the video dr tyson says that why would you think that such a life form would try to communicate with human beings like yeah. when was the last time you had a conversation with a bird or a worm yeah. like you tried to have a conversation with your dog maybe but you didn't expect a reply from yeah, him right sure. right yeah absolutely so that that's why i think that it's going to be very fun to explore different perspectives on what people think about the life out there because I mean let's be honest like this is the topic that everybody has wondered about you know there are these two questions always that I get get asked like where do we stand in the universe and is there life out there mm. so you know I hope that you enjoy this series and let us know what you think in the comments and let's also tag Dr. Neil deGrasse Tyson so that yeah. he sees this video. Dr. And Tyson, if you're watching this video, we are going to get you on our podcast one day. Please, if you're watching this video, just give us a thumbs up. And if you are not Dr. Neil deGrasse Tyson, you know what to do. You're going to like, share and subscribe, subscribe this video. And stay tuned for future talks. Nil.talks. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, thank you so much guys. Clear skies. <laughs>